Hey, everybody. Let me give everybody a second to get on. I have to send the link out to some people because not everybody has had an easy time finding it. So, no problem. If you're having any problems um, either finding or um, finding the videos, just text me and I'll help you as much as I can. Most of y'all have gotten it, but some of y'all, it's y'all have a little more difficult time. So oh, how is everybody's day going? Hey, Katie. Oh, I miss y'all. Me and Crystal literally had a conversation earlier about how, like, we just miss girl time. It's been interesting being at home. Oh, yeah, it is hot. It, So literally, it went from raining and like icky to hot. Oh, you go, bro. Hi, Jeremy. Ooh, Aubrey. I feel you. I'm about to dye my hair too. Good, Allison. We gotta we gotta keep ourselves busy during this time. Yeah, it, it, yeah, interesting is a nice way of putting it. I know, Brianna, I miss y'all so much. Oh, Stacy, yeah, you gotta get used to the, <laughs> get used to the heat. Cassie, six feet away, social distancing. Okay, so I know y'all got emailed y'all's test earlier. Um, well, your two, three tests. Um, it was two and one on the second one. Um, so this is what we're going to do. I miss you all so much. So what we're going to do is we're just actually just going to talk about it. We're going to go um, kind of through it, kind of digest some of the information, you know, just reiterate what we've been going over. That way everybody has a good grasp of it that way nobody is left hanging and everybody understands what's going on for state board okay so um if you don't already have it out i just want you to just go ahead and pull it up or um get your test however we're going to do this um i am going to be saying the questions and the answers so therefore you still need to have it that way you're checking your answers itself and um <laughs> Sarah. Um, if you're going to email me your answers, put it in a different email than the group one, because then everybody sees your questions and answers. Um, okay. So for our first question, it is, what is characterized by redness, swelling, um, and heat and pain? So again, what is characterized by redness, swelling? Heat, pain. No, I'll wait for y'all. This is test one. Sorry. Should have been clear on that one. Perfect. So, inflammation. I was ready for you guys. Yeah, Emily, it's going to be test one, question one. Inflammation. Everybody should have got the test. If not, everybody does have my phone number. So if you are not, um, if you are not getting the emails, please um, just text me and um, we'll get you on there as best we can. Um, 
it won't, you probably won't get an email until the next email is sent out. So nobody has an extra, um, if not letting me send emails, do I text? Yes, you can just text me. That's perfectly fine. Everything works out. It'll all wash out and flush. All right. So question two is a disease caused by a bloodborne virus that causes liver damage. All right. So again, that's a disease caused by a bloodborne virus that causes liver damage. All right, hepatitis. Welcome, Erica. So hepatitis, again, is a disease caused by a bloodborne virus, um, and it causes liver damage. All right. So number three. Oh, here we go. Oh, Erica, I have a question for you later. Um, so number three, invasion of body tissues by disease causing blank bacteria can result in an infection. So again, invasion of the body tissues by disease causing blank bacteria can result in an infection. Hi, Kimberly. All right, so pathogen, pathogenic, um, <clears throat> that is gonna be your invasion of body tissues by a disease or by disease causing pathogenic bacteria can result in infection. Pathogenic, pathogen. All right, so number four is the disease that can be transmitted from one person to another. So a disease that can be transmitted from one person to another. Welcome, Julia. All right, so again, a disease uh, that can be transmitted from one person to another is contagious or communicable disease. Hi, Vicki. I was wondering where you were. All right, and the uh, last question for the written portion of this test is our rod-shaped bacteria. What am I waiting for, Dustin? Oh, put number four, okay, hold on. Make sure that's fine. All right, that was number four, Destiny. You're not that late at all, Vicki. You're perfectly fine. You just need to have your uh, test that was sent out by email earlier. So. Round shape, not rod. Sorry. 
I'll clarify. Perfect. All right, so our round shaped bacteria, coxie. Sorry. But you are correct, rod is silly. But coxie is, what we're looking for on the test. So on our uh, matching, number one is Tinea pettis. And I'm just gonna put the letter down because that is literally a full on sentence. That is a lot to write. But, um, Tinea pettis. But yes, um, so tinea pettis is E, and it is the most frequently encountered infection on the foot, resulting from no services. So again, tinea pettis is the most frequently encountered infection on the foot, resulting from nail services. All right, so number two is plant or animal, or plant animal. Sorry. That one is B. Yes, that is athlete's foot. It is the um, technical term, terminology. All right. So, number two is B. One micro or, um, one called microorganisms uh, will both um, plant and animal characteristics are bacteria with both. Sorry. All right. So number three is spore forming. I feel like before I get on here, an hour seems like so long. And then when I'm here, I'm like, oh no. You gotta talk faster. All right. So, for forming, yes, is A, um, the active stage and inactive stage or spore forming stage of bacteria are referred to as the life cycle of bacteria. All right, so number four is protoplasm. Protoplasm goes by so fast. Yeah, the hour in between is a little weird, but um, the reason why it's there is just to make sure that we don't have any hiccups on our end and y'all don't have any, you know, y'all have life in between the hour. So we're just trying to make it as easy for y'all and as easy for us during this trans transition period. But, um, you just gotta roll with it, baby. All right. Same for I need the hour. Just make sure that we, we don't. I mean, life happens, but yeah, I feel like we all need that hour. Just bring it all together. Plus then there's not that weird time where y'all aren't trying to have a bathroom break or whatever going on. Hope you clean your toilet. Let's hope it's a little easier for them. Well, 
while trying to go to school? That's a great question. All right, so protoplasm is D. Bacteria generally consist of an of an out cell wall or outer cell wall containing a liquid called protoplasm. All right, so number five is bloodborne pathogen. We haven't even got to five yet, Destiny. But yeah, you were right. Yeah, it's D and C. Okay. All buffs. That's why we're going over it. Make sure everybody understands it. So, yes. yes. Number five is C, and it's disease causing microorganisms that are carried in the body by blood or bodily fluids are called bloodborne pathogens. Yeah, we're doing the second test too. So I gotta hurry up. All right, so um, for, for your multiple choice, number one is human immunodeficiency virus is the virus that causes what? All right, so there should have been two emails, Amber. If not, um, I'll send it out to you. That way you can write down the questions and answers later. So perfect. Um, number one, human immunodeficiency virus is the virus that causes AIDS, B. All right, are microscopic plants uh, or microscopic plant paras parasites that include mold, mildew, and yeast? So again, our microscopic plant parasites that include mold, mildew, and yeast. Perfect. So it's going to be D, fungi. All right. A type of bacteria that rarely show any active motility. So a type of bacteria that rarely show any active motility. I believe it all. Hmm. All right, perfect. So um, a type of bacteria that rarely show any motility is B, coxy. All right, so number four, the number of viable organisms in or on the object or surface or organic matter on a surface or object prior to decontamination or sterilization are called what? So again, the number of viable organisms in or on the object or surface or organic matter on a surface or object prior to decontamination or sterilization are called what? And of course, y'all got it right. It's going to be C, bio burden. 
yes for number on four. So no, it's the five over again. All right, so number five. Is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substances. Is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substances? Um... I mean, technically, yeah, I mean, it could be an allergy, but <clears throat> um, for this multiple choice question, they're looking for something else. Obviously, because it's not even a choice. I know I had actually quite a few text messages about it. Uh, it's there to stump you. All right, so number five is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substances is C, MRSA. Yes, Destiny, we're on number five. All right, so moving on. Our next one. Is there true or false questions? And number one, are various poisonous um, substances produ produced by some microorganisms fungi? Yeah, they were worded a little different. weird, but ooh. So this one stumped y'all, every one of you. So are various poisonous substances produced by um, microorganisms? Um, it's okay, Alyssa, we're waiting for you. Y'all, yeah, you all wrong. It's false, they're toxins. An outsider? Who's the outsider? So false, they would be toxins. Well, All right, an example of a pimple or abscess, non-pathogenic. So this one should not stump y'all at all. Chonky, show yourself. You know who is an outsider? Emily. All right. So an example of a pimple or abscess, is it non-pathogenic? I mean, if he wants to learn, you can learn. I don't care. All right, so correct, it's false. It would be a local infection. So, 
An example of a pimpler abscess would be a local infection. I know Emily's a grad. She knew I was going to be live at five. She was waiting for it. All right. Is a fungus that affects plant or grows um, inanimate objects or does not cause human infections in the salon mildew? So again, is a fungus that affects plants or growth? Oh, yeah, or growth grows inanimate objects but does not cause human infections in the salon. Wow, well, he's true or false really stumped y'all. So it's true. Wow. I didn't know I did that. So it's true. <laughs> so again, is a fungus that affects plants or grows on inanimate objects that does not cause human infections in the salon mildew? Yes. Yeah, the wording is a little, <laughs> but you have to be prepared for that because state board's wording is gonna be ridiculously hard. All right, our spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria spirilla. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. Chandler, you right. <laughs> Haley, you have to trust yourself. Like, I need to quit touching my face. Our spiral or cork shapes, uh, or cork shape, corkscrew shaped bacteria spirilla. True. And the last one on here. All right. Organisms that feed, grow, and find shelter on or in a host organism, hepatitis. Yeah, Wendy, they're, they're worded all kinds of crazy ways. That's why you just gotta read between the lines. So organisms that feed grow and find shelter on or in a host, hepatitis. Tricky, tricky. Yeah. I know, Wendy, they've, I mean, true, these true or false questions really stumped them. All right, so it's false. It would be a parasite. <laughs> All right, so false, parasite. All right, so we are going to move on to, yes, keep the test questions to practice with when you're ready for the PSI exam. I always want to watch white chicks, so that's not even in. Not even a question here. All right, so our next test is gonna kind of sound similar. Some of them might be worded a little different. Some might be worried, worded the same. Worded the same, okay. All right, so on exam two, the number of viable organisms in or on the object or surface or organic matter on a surface or object prior to decontamination or sterilization are called what? I know, Jeremy. I mean, 
it was pretty fun, but I do miss actually teaching, like actually being in the building. Perfect, so bio burden. The number of viable organisms in or on the object or surface or organic matter on the surface or object prior to decontamination or sterilization are called what? Bio burden. That one is a mouthful. All right, two, invasion of body tissues by disease causing blank bacteria can result in infection. You're right. Oh, I know. I see all more now than I ever. <laughs> I miss y'all south. I'll definitely have to make more trips south, which is not going to go over well with my North girls. So. We'll figure it out. All right, perfect. So invasion of body tissues by disease causing pathogenic pathogen bacteria can result in infection. All right, so number three, is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substance, substances? Whoops. I know. Okay, so Connie, um, text me later, and um, I will try to get it to you. It's the only thing I have going for me right now. As I sit in my house. So, Marissa, yes. Handwriting is the only thing I have going for me. All right. So. Um, number four is our spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria. Um, no, Amber, they weren't. There were three different emails today. One was the chapters. The other one, um, all right, look, I have sweatpants on underneath this, okay? Emily, we're, we're doing what we got. But, um, So email one was the chapters, email two was the first test, and email three was the other test. Email was that? There were three emails. So your first email was chapters. So um, they were scans from the books. That way anybody that does not have their book at home they can read up on the ecology chapter. The second one was um, your first test, which we just went over. And then the third was the two tests combined into one scan document. If you had any problem getting any of those emails, just text me and I'll get the documents to you. That's going to be the easiest way. My phone is on airplane mode right now, but... As soon as I turn it back on, just shoot me, or as soon as the live is over, shoot me a text message and I'll get you the documents, okay? But um, number four, our spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria, spirilla. All right, Lauren, so just text me here in a little bit and I'll get you that document. 
All right, so moving on to number five. Bacteria generally consist of an out cell wall containing liquid, a liquid called what? Well, Lauren, yeah, I don't, I don't really care. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> I'll post it at the end of this. Okay, Cassie, we're glad to have you back. You are mainly going to focus on your, um, your book. But um, just know that there can be information taken out of other books as well. So that's why we sent y'all all three, just to make sure that y'all got as much information as you can. All right. But yes, so bacteria generally consists of an out cell wall containing a liquid called protoplasm. All right. So we're going to go moving on to our matching. And the first one is bloodborne pathogen. Bloodborne pathogens are best friends around here. All right, so number one, bloodborne pathogen, disease causing microorganisms that are carried in the body or blood by bodily fluids are called um, bloodborne pathogens. So that's C. You are correct. All right, so number two, acquired immunity. immunity. All right, perfect. So acquired immunity is E. Um, acquired immunity is the type of immunity that the body develops after overcoming a disease through um, inflation? Whatever, we're moving on. But it's E. All right, so local infection. Local infection. Monica, we're on three local infections. Yeah, that would be helpful for another. When you already have the questions in front of you, it's just so tempting to just throw them out there. Perfect, Connie. Just want to make sure everybody's getting the information they need because we're all going through this together. All right, so local infection, yes, is D. An example of a pimpler abscess is a local infection. All right, so our next one is spore forming. Spore forming. Yes, Brenna, it is D. So number four, spore forming. Spore forming. All right, perfect. So it's A, the active stage or inactive or spore forming stage of bacteria are referred to as the life cycle of bacteria. So again, the active stage or inactive stage 
or spore forming stage of bacteria are referred to as the life cycle of bacteria. All right, and last but not least for our um, matching is Tinea pedis. Bad thing is, I haven't seen y'all in like what a week, and like I can hear y'all's voices like when y'all are like when y'all type in the chat. I must say, that's how much I miss y'all, except for the new ones. I don't know what y'all's voices sound like. Can't wait to find out when quarantine is over. All right, so perfect, yes. So number five is B. Tinea pedis is the most frequently encountered infection on the foot resulting from nail services. And yes, Chandler said earlier that it also is considered athlete's foot. I miss y'all. I miss you, Erica. All right, so number one is a parasitic micro, uh, submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in the cell cells of the biological organism. I know as long as we stick inside and we make sure that, you know, we clean up after ourselves and wash our hands, this, this will be over before we know it. The people that aren't doing that, that's the hard part. <coughs> All right, so it's a parasitic submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in the cells of a biological organism. And that's perfect, B virus. B virus. Okay, perfect. Oh, well that helps out quite a bit because I'm that means I don't have to do it. So you'll be sending y'all's answers to Molly and um, I'll get y'all I'll get y'all Molly's email here in a little bit. All right, so two are um, various poisonous substances produced by some microorganisms. So that is. And you just throw it out there like that. Is that Molly's email? Um, yes. So I would send them right after class. And number one was B as in boy. That's the only one talking about. All right, so our various poisonous substances produced by some, uh, some microorganisms, B toxin. Number three is bacteria are harmless. So what bacteria are harmless? So three. What bacteria are harmless? Perfect. So A, non-pathogenic bacteria. Sorry, I ran out of room there. Just gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah, bacteria that are harmless are non-pathogenic. Number four, organisms that feed, grow, and find shelter on or in a host organism.
So organisms that feed, grow, and find shelter, honor in a host organism. Perfect, so C, parasites. So our next one, which is our last one of our multiple choice, is five, and our um, microscopic plant parasites that include mold, mildew, and yeast. Submicroscopic plant parasites that include mold, mildew, and yeast. Perfect. So, C fungi. All right. So, now we got our true false questions. So number one is a contagious skin disease caused by itch mite toxin. All right, so yes, Destiny, B, B, A, C, C, yeah, perfect. So can anybody tell me what it would be if it's not a toxin? Put y'all out there. Just looking for one time in the group chat. One. What would it be if it's not a toxin? No, uh, not hepatitis. There we go, Jasmine. Chloe, scabies. So it would be false scabies. Scabies are those itch mites that they're looking for. Oh, sorry. All right, so number two, um, a disease caused by a bloodborne pat a bloodborne virus that causes liver damage. All right, and if it's false, what would it be? Since, since Lynn already knows. Mm, not HIV. So disease caused by a bloodborne virus that causes liver damage. There you go, Lynn, it's your time to shine. Yes, it's false hepatitis. All right, so three, a type of bacteria that rarely show any active motility. Coxie. All right, so a type of bacteria that rarely show any active motility. Coxie. Perfect, true. All right, so number four is a disease that can trans uh, can be transmitted from one person to another. Contagious communicable disease.
So perfect. A disease that can be transmitted from a pers one person to another is true um, contagious communicable disease. All right. And last but not least on this one, a sign of a bacterial infection is present is the is the present of pus presence of pus. Sorry. Yes, and we're on five. Just so y'all <clears throat> just so y'all know we might go a little past six, but not very much. That's fine. Work earlier. All right, so perfect. Number five is true. All right, so our last and final little um, questions. One is a contagious skin disease caused by uh, the itch mite. Sorry, that's Waylon. It's perfectly fine, Chandler. <coughs> Boy! Anyways, moving on. One is scabies. No problem, Emma. <laughs> um, that's not Cujo. He's actually the little one. <laughs> what was question five? I didn't have to. Lily, uh, text me and I'll get you the questions. He's actually a little guy. He just thinks he's big. All right, so he's a little terrier. He's my little trick dog. All right, a sign of a bacterial infection is the presence of what? So again, a sign of bacterial infection is the presence of what? Yeah, he can actually uh, jump through hula hoops. And he's been in training for I don't know how long, I've wasted my money. For so long on that child. For my dog. Alright, so a sign of bacterial infection is the presence of us. My favorite thing in the world. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Yes. Um, is a parasitic Submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in the cells of biological organisms. What is what do we call that? Um, Zuli, I'm gonna put it at the end of the group chat just so everybody well, I mean it doesn't really matter. Hang on, I'll just put it in real quick. All right, so a parasitic submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in the cells of a biological organism. And that would be a virus. Coronavirus. All right, so number four. Invasion of body tissues by disease-causing blank bacteria can result in an infection. All right, 
So invasion of body tissues by disease causing blank bacteria can result in an infection. Perfect. Pathogenic. All right. So our path pathogenic bacteria is the one that invades the body's tissues by disease and can cause an infection. What's that number, Jeremy? I'm so confused. All right, five, organisms that feed, grow, and find shelter on or in a host organism. Organisms that feed, grow, and find shelter in or on a host organism. Oh. I didn't even look at the number. I just literally just was like, okay, Jeremy. All right, perfect. So yes, it is a parasite. So organisms that feed, grow, and find shelter on a host or an organ, a host organism is a parasite. All right. So for the first one in matching, number one is acquired immunity. So acquired immunity. Perfect. So B. Acquired immunity is the type of immunity that the body develops after overcoming a disease on or through you know collations I was about to die I just sent my little quizzes bye Kayla hear that cute little baby you're such a cute cutie all right so number two is spore forming spore forming Spore forming. Perfect. So spore forming is E, the active stage or inactive or, sorry, the active stage and inactive or spore forming stage of bacteria are referred to as the life cycle of bacteria. Jasmine, just text me for Molly's number. I don't want to put her out there like that. I mean, I don't care if the crazies text me. Just want them texting Molly. I don't think she'd enjoy that. Simply because I just ignore it. All right, so number three, a local infection. Local infection. Perfect, D. So an example of a pimple or abscess is a local infection. Um, number four, tinea pettis.
also known as athlete's foot. All right, so yes. Um, tinea pedis is the most frequently encountered local infection on the foot resulting from nail services. A. Yes, April, she does. Okay, and before I go on to number five, um, let's go ahead and do um, another roll call for Jeremy, since he is taking roll call. Before we move on to number five, I'm just going to go ahead and do another roll call. That way it just clears it up for Jeremy. It's a little bit easier to see when y'all are all compiled into one. All right, so while we have that going on, <clears throat> number five, bloodborne pathogen. Okay, so you did your quizzes and you wrote them down. So then you can just take a picture of them and send them to Molly and I can get you Molly's email. So perfect. C, um, bloodborne pathogen disease causing microorganisms that care um, that are carried in the blood or the body by blood or bodily fluids are called bloodborne pathogen. All right, so give you some of the questions. From the last two days before this. Um, let me ask Wendy and we'll talk about that. Um, we'll ask Wendy and uh, Jeremy, I'll let y'all know tomorrow morning. I'm gonna send out the email. Um, they put Molly's email in the chat above, but um, just text me and I'll, I'll get you that email. Um, so number one, bacteria generally consist of an out cell wall containing a liquid called what? Perfect, thank you, Annabelle. The bacteria generally consist of an out cell wall containing a liquid called what? Perfect. Protoplasm. All right, so number two, what is characterized by redness, swelling, heat, and pain? I'll notice that these are the questions just asked over and over again in a different way. That way y'all get kind of used to the wording. So what is characterized by redness, swelling, heat, and pain? Sounds like head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <clears throat> what is characterized by redness, swelling, heat, and pain? Yes, C, inflammation. Inflammation. All right, bacteria that are harmless. Maria, I think you're on a lag.
bacteria that are harmless. Perfect, so C, non-pathogenic. Non-pathogenic. One-celled microorganisms that are both blank and blank characteristics are bacteria. So one-celled microorganisms with both blank and blank characteriz uh, characteristics are bacteria. Almost done, guys. Bye, Miranda. See you tomorrow. Perfect. All right. So number five, a type of bacteria that rarely show any active motility. Rarely show any active motility. Maria and Jazzy G, I think you are on a lag. Perfect. So a type of bacteria that really show any motility is D, oxy. So last five questions, we'll make it through as quick as possible. So true or false, are spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria scabies? Spiral or corkscrew shaped bacteria scabies. Perfect. False. They're spirilla. All right. A disease caused by a bloodborne virus that causes liver damage. Hepatitis. Perfect, true. The next one is three is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substances, a virus. Uh, what was number two? Number two was true. Number three is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity to certain foods, chemicals, or other normally harmless substances, a virus. It is false. It is MRSA. MRSA. All right. Number four, the number of viable organisms in or on the object or surface or organic matter on a surface or uh, object prior to decontamination or sterilization is called bioburden. So, again, one more time the number of viable organisms or the yeah, the number of viable organisms in or on the object or surface or organic matter on a surface or object prior to decontamination or sterilization are called bioburden. True. She true. That's what they call her. All right. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV is the virus that causes AIDS, true or false? True or false, human immunodeficiency virus that causes the virus, that causes the virus, or is the virus that causes AIDS? True, false. Perfect, so it is true, it does cause AIDS. <clears throat> 
All right, guys. So remember, text me again. Um, I'll let me comment my number real quick in the group chat just to make sure y'all have it. You know. It's perfectly fine if it's messy. Yes, Destiny. All right, guys. So y'all have a good evening. Um, yes, I'll text you Molly's email in the SD chat. Everybody have a good evening. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Sorry, we went a little, what was for? Okay, hold on. It was true. All right, Erica, don't, I, I need to text you. I have a question. Answers to Molly tomorrow. Yes, you can text them tomorrow. Bye, Jeremy. Bye, guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.